Can you guys see the screen? Yep. Yes. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Um, so it's really, really great to be here with, uh, with a small group of people that uh, is dedicated to making impact and that's uh, how it's happening. Um, and um, it's just such an extraordinary time really where, um, you know, uh, with uh, us being imprisoned in our homes, uh, borders closed, suddenly we realize there are no borders and uh, people are connecting uh, across the world uh, on these incredible Zoom calls. So uh, this is a wonderful thing to see. I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the uh, scalable climate solutions that involve nature-based solutions. Um, we're so in love with these uh, machines that we're building and they're wonderful, but uh, something quite extraordinary happens when uh, we can uh, use not only technology, but uh, use nature where nature, humanity, and technology all work together in harmony. And this is one of my inspirations, Dr. Arne Fjortov. Um, Ursus uh, knows him. Uh, Ursus in Bangkok is tuning in here. Um, he is, um, we call him our, our mangrove uh, hero. He, uh, at age 80, um, uh, basically moved to Myanmar to restore mangroves, realizing that it's actually one of the most cost-effective and scaling, scalable climate solutions out there in the world. Um, and he's been the inspiration for, for many of us coming together here uh, to uh, protect uh, Mother Earth uh, by planting a lot of seeds um, and protecting nature. And we call the overall uh, framework that we're applying here to be Earth positive, right? So Arna um, has had a lot of carbon emissions from flying to, uh, to, from Norway to uh, Myanmar and traveling around the world um, in his illustrious career as a journalist, but he's more than made up uh, for that by restoring millions of mangroves uh, in, in, in Myanmar and many other positive actions. So Earth Positive is a very simple framework. It's about leaving Earth better than we found it, right? Um, and it means uh, taking responsibility for our footprint and having a, a handprint that's bigger than our footprint. That's the basic framework. And it's remembering this uh, principle of reciprocity that we have with uh, nature. Every indigenous culture realizes that uh, we take from nature and we give back. And the good news here is that uh, about 1% shift in our consumption uh, actually uh, can change everything. So literally 1% um, of uh, consumption, 1% of GDP roughly per annum uh, would actually have a massive impact on regenerating our planet. Um, investing in things like protecting rainforests, uh, for example, the Amazon that are an incredible, incredible um, wealth uh, uh, of humanity that's being uh, destroyed at incredible rates. 25% uh, of carbon emissions are from deforestation right now. So um, uh, the quickest thing that we can do uh, as a scalable climate solution is literally, you know, we could, we could instantaneously uh, reduce 25% of emissions by just stopping tropical deforestation. Um, and the potential is much, much greater. So there's nothing, there's nothing that we can do that's faster than actually this. Um, there are many other solutions that, uh, that are part of a, an amazing suite of climate-based solutions. Um, a good friend of ours, Carl Pendragon, is working on a, a venture called Sky Mining. Uh, the idea is um, to have uh, uh, plants, elephant grass, regenerate landscapes while producing a carbon-negative fuel um, that works actually with all the existing uh, infrastructure. So imagine uh, being able to heat your home, power your car, fly an airplane with fuel, um, where the more you're flying that airplane, the more you're driving that car, the more carbon you're actually putting into the ground, the more you're healing uh, the earth. So solutions like that are, are out there. Uh, and uh, uh, restoring degraded lands has to be a super, super key um, pillar to what we do. Uh, right now, the negative externalities due to land degradation, largely from uh, uh, conventional agriculture, uh, are estimated between 5 to 
15 trillion dollars a year. So let's stick with, let's say, an estimate of 10.2, um, somewhere in the middle. That's in an 85 trillion dollar economy, right? So simply a uh, stopping uh, degenerative agricultural practices um, uh, that drive deforestation, um, uh, you know, which we can see, uh, you know, whenever we pick up uh, a product um, wrapped in plastic in a supermarket, there's a 50% chance um, it's caused deforestation somewhere even more, uh, whether it's through um, uh, palm, palm oil in Indonesia, soy cultivation in, in, uh, in Brazil that drives deforestation. Uh, and then, of course, we have, um, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the terrible deforestation to turn into pastures uh, and, and, and hamburgers. So um, um, uh, the restoration of degraded land can be done at scale with, uh, with these solutions. Um, uh, there are ways to, for example, uh, use nano clay and biochar to create um, a substrate in which uh, fast growing grasses like elephant grasses can start to grow. Um, this is really incredible. Uh, there are ways uh, in which uh, you can take arid land, um, for example, uh, a uh, uh, part of the Australian coast uh, where there was no water has been turned into the largest tomato production facility in the country, um, which produces four liters of water for every kilogram of tomato uh, produced. Um, and this is simply uh, using, a, using, a, using basic science and innovation. Um, you can check out some of these things at uh, uh, thebluecademy.org. Uh, Gunter Pauli, um, uh, the author of The Blue Economy, has open sourced 200 methods for doing that. So that particular way is uh, based on taking the temperature differential of water in the ocean to precipitate con condensation um, uh, so that uh, basically tomatoes can grow, extra water can grow, and this degraded desert land essentially has now been created, uh, is, is now a self-sufficient ecosystem, um, and the value, lift, the value created is just extraordinary. Um, of course, tropical forests is, uh, is really the, important, the most important thing for us to focus on right now. Uh, with COVID acceleration of deforestation in, uh, in the Amazon. Uh, the deforestation in the Amazon has actually accelerated. Um, uh, and um, uh, we, we, we simply need to, need to step it up. Um, that's at the core of much more than carbon. Um, you can see that uh, we have about half of the world's biodiversity concentrated in about 5% of the land mass. Um, it's, the basis for most of uh, the medicines um, uh, that we have. Um, it's key to hydrological cycles. Um, it's incredibly important. Um, so, so this is this has to be part of uh, climate solutions. I would recommend checking out uh, the website biointegrity.net, um, uh, where uh, that you'll find a white paper um, uh, around uh, uh, essentially. Uh, nature-based climate solutions focused on forests, um, arguing that uh, the protection uh, of tropical forests is the most important and scalable climate solution out there. So amazing information there, including, for example, this uh, uh, this chart I lifted from the from the from the document. Um, you know, we can see that, of course, the storage of uh, Greenhouse gases is, is important, but there's so much more involved. Water, water cycling, for example, is much, much more important. The hydrological cycle where trees actually create their own uh, water pumps uh, is super, super important. Um, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the areas, uh, for example, uh, he indicated there as well as storm busting. So I wanted to show another kind of a tropical tree that's super important. This is a mangrove um, and um, uh, recently, Australia, Australian researchers have found that mangrove ecosystems create ecosystem services of $194,000 per hectare per year, right? Now, that's pretty extraordinary because planting a little seedling like that, you know, costs, uh, you know, maybe 20, 30 cents for a few years until it's uh, it's able to 
um, kind of uh, have a high chance of survival maybe adds another uh, 30, 40 cents to that. So we can create, um, we can fully restore uh, a hectare of mangroves and get uh, pretty much a payback um, of several hundred fold um, uh, in the first year. And, um, and then incentivizing communities to keep these mangrove ecosystems uh, alive uh, will create really an impact of a thousand fold per annum. All right. All right. So the question is, how do we do it at scale? Right. Um, we've uh, we've done a project in which we've uh, essentially uh, used uh, standard um, uh, uh, methods for carbon validation. Super bureaucratic process. Uh, five PhDs, three hundred and twenty thousand dollars spent. Um, until the carbon credits uh, were actually uh, um, vested and were until we could sell them. Um, we're not going to make it um, relying on traditional bureaucracies. So any scalable climate solution has to uh, essentially take bureaucracy out of it. It has to be um, uh, based on uh, evidence, based on data, using um, exponential technologies. A group of us came together to form Earth Pulse. Earth Pulse is a super brain and a heart to protect Mother Earth, right? So we have amazing technologies uh, like, you know, like the internet where we can see, for example, uh, what's going on with deforestation, um, you know, with satellite information that's, uh, that's available. Um, but the super brain is not really quite enough. We've, we've monitored with, with shock how, um, how the planet is being destroyed. Um, but we're not able to fund those that are at the um, those that are fighting uh, the, the 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 war to protect those ecosystems, because information is not enough, and that's where value comes in. Right. So maybe you guys, someone's uh, could you uh, mute yourself? There's someone, someone uh, with audio there in the background. Um, so the idea is that the super heart is important, right? If we really want scalable solutions, we need to get resources to people. It's not enough to know something is going on. Uh, we need to actually be able to send the money to do this work, right? So that's, that's the idea. So imagine this super heart uh, that's able to bring resources anywhere in the world um, and uh, that uses new forms of currency that uh, are like water, that rain around the world, that are like um, rivers flowing, um, that nourish life, that uh, allow deserts to become uh, blooming fields of flowers. Um, the um, methodology we've used for this is, um, uh, it's called MARE, Mother, or Monitor, Evaluate, Reward. Um, you know, monitoring how a project is going, how many mangroves have been uh, planted, how are they surviving, and then rewarding those that are actually doing the work. Um, and again, all powered by exponential uh, technologies. So think, for example, instead of uh, Bitcoin's proof of work, we have proof of care. Plant a tree, take a photograph, you know, and, and earn a coin. Um, any talk of scalable climate solutions without agriculture would be missing a huge point, right? So our farmers are managing landscapes, um, vast amount of landscapes. Uh, sadly, most are not doing this, this well. A lot, large amount of deforestation um, and land degradation, uh, uh, topsoil erosion, desertification, pollution of waterways is driven by conventional agriculture. There are certain things that we can do to reward much better behaviors by farmers. This could be very simple things like uh, managing water tables in a better way, right? There's a, there's a company in Finland uh, which has come up with a free map for farmers. Anyone can sort of look at uh, where, you know, uh, put in the, the their coordinates and uh, the, the computer uh, algorithm basically tells them how to manage their farm better, just, you know, in terms of some very, very basic things uh, to sequester carbon in a more efficient way. At the next level, there would be, for example, regenerative agriculture instead of tilling uh, the, the, the soil releasing all this carbon in the atmosphere um, while destroying microbiomes, uh, there are ways of using cover crops um, that actually store the carbon, that 
enable you to grow without pesticides, without uh, nitrates and phosphates, and essentially keep on regenerating the soil, uh, making a lot more money for farmers while healing the land. Um, there's, a, there's a fantastic uh, uh, blockchain project called Regen Network, um, part of Earth Pulse. Uh, they're now selling carbon credits for a, an Australian farm um, where they are not, they're not going through any traditional bureaucratic verification. It's satellite imagery that basically shows how uh, uh, carbon uh, is being sequestered, in this case, through better silvopasture. Um, so this is the amazing thing, right? Uh, it used to be so expensive to verify soil carbon. Uh, you'd have to take samples. Um, you can see here a study referenced uh, where scientists have come up with ways to use the free Sentinel-2 data uh, from satellites uh, in order to map soil carbon uh, without ever taking a step on a field, right? And so that's the fit there. And then uh, you can see here, um, you know, uh, three different periods in which uh, you can see how uh, certain areas, uh, you know, have improved their management of soil carbon just through looking at this from the satellite. So you can see uh, sort of, uh, you know, earlier 2006, quite a lot of red dots. Then you can see very quickly in the middle, uh, something happened here. The guys on the, on the right side didn't change. So, you know, that soil carbon kept that. Le but some, on the left side, you can see a very clear border. Someone did something differently here. Uh, and then you can see uh, they stepped it up on the right side and the soil carbon sequestration increased dramatically. So essentially, uh, these, the kind of project that would have cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and taken you know, months, if not years, to verify, you know, we can do this uh, right now with algorithms, AI, free satellite information for, you know, uh, you know in, in, in pretty much close to real time. Um, so getting to the, uh, the end here, um, you know, one of the things that uh, we need to do is enable any human being with the press of a button to be part of um, uh, regeneration conservation, right? Um, so uh, the idea is to have natural capital as an investable asset class. Um, imagine uh, being able to invest for $10 a month into um, uh, an asset class which regenerates the soil uh, protects biodiversity and produces returns. Uh, three major uh, categories there would be regenerative agriculture, um, and um, you know, with things like uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the no-till no methods that I mentioned, um, and um, and and other uh, permaculture-based systems that are super uh, much more efficient. Um, uh, it's looking at uh, the kinds of crops that heal the world, um, you know, whether it's uh, bamboo that can grow on degraded land and restore it, uh, or hemp, uh, or um, uh, fast-growing elephant grasses that have all kinds of uses for food, fuel, and fiber. Uh, then there's the next level of regenerative forestry. Uh, of course, those are connected. You can have agroforestry uh, projects that are super effective. For example, when a, a monocultured farmer starts to introduce uh, forestry into an operation, uh, on average, the returns of that farmer increase by 40% per year, right? So this is actually smart uh, money uh, producing climate benefits. And then finally, there's the trickiest, but the, the highest impact, um, the crown jewel um, of conservation, right? That's where the, 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 the greatest density of carbon stores is uh, in tropical forests. If we keep on lighting that on fire, um, you know, we destroy um, uh, the greatest wealth that, that the world has, um, which, is, which is really uh, the, the, the living library that we have in, in biodiversity. Um, right now, there are, uh, there's no monetary way to really invest in conservation projects uh, at scale. Uh, carbon credits are the closest, forestry carbon credits, such as Red Plus, but uh, they were plagued by a bureaucracy. Um, I can tell you many stories about that. However, um, uh, if we can start to look at satellite-based, um, AI-based, blockchain-based systems that take out uh, the bureaucracy that are decentralized, uh, that are resilient, uh, we can then verify, for example, that a, a rainforest has been protected, that there's biodiversity in that area. 
Um, and um, and this uh, also has incredible social premium. So think about uh, this ant forest project that was started uh, in China, which has 500 million users, people uh, behaving, making small changes in their behavior, like let's say walking to work or biking to work and therefore saving, uh, saving a little bit uh, of carbon for which uh, trees are then planted in the Gobi Desert. Um, right now they've planted 100 million trees funded by this initiative, right? Because it's fun, they made it fun. So, so this crown jewel is something we really need to get creative about and, uh, and, and, and solve because without this, um, we're not gonna make it. Uh, so we need a solution. Uh, we don't just need a new climate solution. There are many out there. Um, we need climate solutions that everyone can be a part of, right? So the idea is we really need that button to say, okay, I'm in, you know, uh, I'm going to support this. Um, and uh, that, that is really the tipping point. So may the forest be with you. Uh, and um, I very much look forward to uh, having a few minutes to chat with you guys. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I'm going to dive in really quickly and kind of say, hey, if there's, um, if there's a call to action woven into this, um, how would you suggest people getting involved, contributing, sharing the message? What would the call to action be at the end of this presentation? Yeah, abs absolutely. Um, so I would, uh, I would recommend, um, uh, first of all, um, uh, we have uh, these wonderful uh, plan a positive weekly calls um, uh, on Tuesdays, um, and um, uh, we'd love to involve uh, anyone, invite anyone um, to uh, uh, tune in to present uh, game-changing planetary solutions there. Um, uh, the idea really is to, uh, to kind of uh, create this network of networks where um, we, uh, we um, are able to accelerate these solutions. Um, so Peter can give uh, information on, uh, on how to tune into that. We have a community right now on Telegram called Earth Pulse, right? So you can visit earthpulse.io and just uh, join the community. Um, and, um, and then uh, there is a, a very specific initiative uh, that we're um, championing right now with the pandemic. And um, I would recommend going to dot earth uh the idea is Sorry, to address what was that what last one it's end pandemics dot earth so, so to to stop the next pandemic we really need to go to the root cause that uh pandem pandemics come from our unhealthy relationship with nature and we need to protect nature um and um uh, you can see a recording of a call that we organized a couple weeks ago uh, where about 10,500 people actually tuned in, um, uh, which was quite, quite extraordinary. Um, there, the idea is that we need a Marshall Plan to protect nature, right? We, we really, you know, we can't go back to the, the, the old normal. Um, trillions of dollars will be uh, used to sort of restart this economy. But if we, if we do that without, um, without including nature in this um, and just go back to the uh, old normal, it's literally just flicking the switch on uh, again to the uh, doomsday machine. So uh, please support us there. We have about 25 organizations that have come together just in the space of three weeks to, uh, to push this agenda forward and uh, more and more joining. So uh, make your voices heard. We're organizing a series of webinars. If you want to present, let us know. Um, but uh, uh, those are a couple ways that uh, I would uh, love, suggest, love to suggest getting involved. That's brilliant. Thanks so much. It's a great answer. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Any more questions? <laughs> Peter, would you like to say a few words about Planet Positive and how people can get, get involved? Yeah, I, I, I gave an intro at the beginning, um, but we're basically supporting all the initiatives that Alan spoke to in his presentation. Um, and creating community around that, um, business opportunities. And um, I guess it's just really focused on, on scaling the solutions that are necessary to um, 
prevent us from reaching the tipping point of no return. Uh, I put my LinkedIn link in the, in the chat box there. It's simple, just my name, Peter Crane. Uh, but you can click on there and connect with me. And if you want to join a Tuesday call, they're every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, just shoot me, a, shoot me a note on LinkedIn and I'll add you to the call. Wonderful. Thank you, Peter. And uh, also wanted to uh, call out and say hello to, uh, to, to Reiki Corden, who's joined from, uh, from Seeds, uh, an absolutely extraordinary uh, uh, project uh, that is all about uh, regeneration and, um, uh, and, uh, and a, conscious, uh, a conscious new form of currency. Um, so that's also an incredible way to, uh, to get involved. So I'll, I'll uh, uh, Daniel has shared the website there, joinseeds.com. The idea is uh, get good, get seeds for good deeds. So anyone who's doing positive work, um, you know, uh, you know, deserves, uh, deserves to get uh, uh, some benefits and um, it's an extraordinary project. Um, and uh, uh, right now Reiki and, uh, and the group at uh, Seeds uh, are actively weaving together a network of regenerative organizations. There are over 200 that are involved right now. Uh, and this is really um, uh, probably uh, the, the, the organization right now that has the most critical mass in terms of really uh, funding regeneration at scale. Um, so, uh, so yeah, thanks for tuning in, Reiki. Don't know if you want to share a few, few words as well. It's very late for our Reiki based in Bali. <laughs> Sure, thanks for that. Uh, I'm conscious that there's a minute left in this, so I'll just be really quick, but I appreciate the introduction to this. I mean, there's something that we're really serving, which if we look at the foundation of our crises today, it's just how our economic and financial systems are set up and what they reward and what they encourage. So, you know, as Kate Raworth said, we're in systems that are degenerative by default. We need to move to systems that are regenerative by design. That's by moving into exponentially evolutionary financial systems that are governed directly by the people who are part of them. And then we can start rewiring all the incentives that are built into our economic systems that were designed centuries ago. Now we could redesign them for today's civilization and the context of the crises that we're facing. So that's the big picture. It's what we're working on. If you want to get involved there, you know, jointseeds.com. We also have a decentralized organization project called HIFA, which you can find at dho.hypha h-y-p-h-a dot earth so either one of those are great and if you want to get in contact with us you can go to jointseeds.com there's a little you know mailbox button on the bottom right if you get in contact there someone will reach out to you and get you plugged into the movement yeah and that's everything for me if you want to know more you can message me in the chat and i'll drop off now awesome yeah, thank you, Reiki, and thank you, everyone. Um, I think our time is up, three thirty. But uh, you know, um, yeah, it's been a it's been a pleasure, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm so glad uh, you guys are putting together such good minds and good communities here. So bravo for uh, uh, unit conferences. Thank you, Alan.